everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Sophia, if you're new here, and in today's video, we are going to be doing something really fun. I'm gonna show you guys how I transformed these four items from the Dollar Tree and made them look like something you might find in the aisles of West Elm or CB2. If you like that kind of content, please make sure you are subscribed and you turn on your notification bell every time I post a new video, and let's get right into it. For the first project, I'm gonna show you the easiest one of the four, and that is to upcycle your typical glass Dollar Tree vase that I've seen a million people make over, but I've never seen anybody do this. You're gonna need some vinyl faux leather repair tape and some scissors, and that's all the supplies that you need. I love this DIY so much because there's no glue involved, it's very minimal supplies, and it's super easy to do. Anybody could do this. The trickiest part is getting everything to line up super straight because you don't want everything to be all uneven and wonky. So that was kind of the thing that took the most time for me was, and you wanna make sure that the first layer that you do, I started from the bottom and worked my way up. You wanna make sure that that first layer is as straight as possible because every layer on top of that is going to build on top of that first layer. So if your first layer is not straight, neither will your second or third layer be. And once you get it, for the most part, pretty straight, I do wanna say you wanna pick one spot that you're making the back. So just because obviously that doesn't look as nice as the front and you wanna make that spot look the same throughout so you know which side is the back and you know which side is the front. And this tape is so much more forgiving than contact paper. As you can see here, I messed up and I could just boop, peel it right back and do it all over again and it doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't rip the previous one off and it looks great. And you can fill this with whatever kind of dried floral that you like. And I ended up putting this in my bathroom and I love the way it turned out. For the second DIY, I really needed a nice looking toothbrush holder that wasn't $100. So I ended up picking up this kind of ugly blue one at the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm giving it a once over with some stone spray paint. I'll make sure everything I talk about that I can, I'll link in my description. A tip I'd like to give you guys when using the stone spray paint is don't just like hold down the nozzle and let her rip. Do it in like little spurts as you can see as I'm doing here because that way you have a lot more control over the texture that you're placing. And now that I got some texture, it's time to choose my color. And of course, if you know me, you know I love neutrals. So I went with a flat black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. Again, I'll link it in my description. And I ended up just giving this one coat. And then after the black dried, I went back in with the stone spray paint just to add a little bit more texture. And once that was done, I added the matte clear to seal and protect my toothbrush holder, just because it's obviously gonna be near water and I didn't wanna ruin what I just made. So definitely, if you're going to buy any spray paint, these three you should always have in your arsenal. And this was the final result. For my third project I'm going to share with you guys, it was actually inspired by something I saw on Mr. Kate's channel, so I'll make sure I link her video in the description down below. But the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking this frame I found from the Dollar Tree, and they do sometimes have black, but I, of course mine didn't, so I have to spray paint mine black because that's the color that I wanted mine to be. One tip, you wanna make sure that when you are spray painting frames, I always start with the back first actually, and then I do the front last, just so then that way you have the cleanest finish on what you'll actually be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. And now I'm just going through this magazine that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree, and I wanted to find just a couple different like options for pictures that I wanted to stick inside this frame. You have to think that magazines, obviously, the creative directors and the photographers for magazines are obviously very talented, and you can get really beautiful pictures out of them for a very affordable price. Now this picture I'm showing you here isn't the one that I ended up deciding to show you guys in the end, but just as an example, you can see it fits perfectly and I'm just going to tape down all four sides to the back of the mat, which I also picked up from the Dollar Tree. And now that we're all sealed up in the back, it's just time to get the painter's tape now to section off a piece of the picture that we want to paint a different color. So I'm using my blue painter's tape and I'm using the thick one just to give myself a little leeway so when I'm spray painting this, I don't get a bunch of spray paint on the top. 
Now when I saw Mr. Kate's example, she just went straight across the bottom and she did hers in like a bright yellow, which worked for that picture. But for me, I wanted more of like a, like a warm caramel color just cause that fits my aesthetic a little bit better. And I just decided to go diagonal just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm just using a paper bag and holding it down to make sure that I don't get any spray paint on the top section. But somehow I still did a little tip for you guys. You can just take nail polish remover and it'll take all that paint off the glass right off. And then my last tip on this project that I'm gonna give you is you wanna make sure that you are letting your paint dry 100%. Like I let this dry in my garage overnight before I took the painter's tape off because I have learned the hard way that if you go a little too early, you're gonna ruin everything you just did. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm just showing you guys here, just a little bit got on that little section there. So I'm just taking it off with some nail polish remover and it comes right off. And this is how it turned out. For our final project, I'm gonna share with you guys how I made this candle that was actually inspired by something I saw Peony and Honey do. She ended up making a plant holder, which was awesome, but I really wanted a candle for my bathroom, so what I'm doing is I'm taking these two Dollar Tree bowls and hot gluing one on top of the other. I primarily focused the hot glue just on the rim because if you hot glue the center, the hot glue's not gonna reach, so you just wanna hot glue the rims to each other. And if you really wanted a more secure hold, you totally could choose to use E6000 or an industrial strength glue, but for what I'm using it for, my hot glue gun worked just perfect. Now that I've attached those two, it's time for some spray paint. And again, I'm going to use a similar technique to what I used with the toothbrush holder. So I'm gonna use some stone spray paint to give it some texture first. And I'm gonna do just kind of little spurts like I mentioned before. Actually, my husband's doing this one because he was already outside. So I asked him if he could do it and he knows how to spray paint just like I do, so. And then I'm going to paint it black now, just like I did with the toothbrush holder. And then now going in again with the stone spray paint so you can see how that kind of all looked together. And after I was happy with how that texture looked, while that's outside drying, I am going to melt down these Dollar Tree candles. The only reason I picked these was because they're actually super easy to melt down and the shape is very user-friendly when you are trying to make your own candle. Please be careful when you're doing this. As you can see, I've laid down several things to make my life a little bit easier because I have made a mess melting down candles. So just be careful. I did it on a very low heat for about 35 minutes to melt these down all the way. And now I'm just gluing down one of the wicks from one of the candles and I'm gonna wrap it around this kebab stick so it doesn't get lost when I'm pouring the wax. After I got the wick in about the right spot that it needs to be for the candle, I'm actually, this is gonna be a major tip that I've learned the hard way. You're going to wanna pour your wax into something that has a spout to it, like this little measuring cup I found from the Dollar Tree. It just makes your life so much easier. So many times when I've poured wax, it runs down the side of the candle or runs down of whatever I'm pouring it into. This just makes your life so much easier and it's worth the $1 it costs. My only regret with this DIY is I wish I would have bought a third candle. I thought two would fill it up all the way, but I wish I would have had one more to fill it up completely, but at least it's something that I can reuse and relight and work as I go. And this is how our DIY candle turned out. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I post home decor and DIY content every single week and I hope I see you guys next Sunday. Bye.